The O11 D Evo RGB case by Li and Li has made quite the first impressions while building inside of it. So we're gonna talk about it today and also their brand new LCD fans. You might be thinking, Ed, why is your laptop hanging in midair? Well, this isn't a laptop. What you're seeing here is the Flipgo by JSOX. You get two displays in a foldable package, weighing only 2.43 pounds, making the Flipgo the perfect choice for the on-the-go productivity. The monitors come in 13.5 and 16-inch variants, rocking 60 hertz IPS panels at 2.2K resolution. Multitasking is a breeze thanks to the four different display modes. We got Ultra View in both Portrait and Landscape mode, and we got Stacked Views and Split Screen Portrait Views. You can connect them to all kinds of devices, making them suitable for any situation. Smartphones are no exception, allowing you to browse your favorite content on a much bigger screen. Starting January 30th, JSOX is launching its crowdfunding with early bird prices up to 30% off. So click the link below to check it out and be one of the first to take your mobile office to the next level. So the total cost of this PC for those who always ask for a price breakdown was $3865 and some change. Now this does include current retail prices for the parts and extra aesthetic stuff like cables. This also includes the operating system, which I was able to grab for dirt cheap on yourcdkey.com. Using the code TS20, knock the price down to around $16 for a Windows 10 Pro key. If you guys want to pick one up for yourself, I'll leave a link down below. Just make sure to go into the activation settings to put in the new key once you do get it. So the O11 RGB case is pretty much like a cross between the original Evo and the Evo XL with some nice additions, which we will get into. Pricing is the same. You can expect to pick up the white edition for the same price as before, which is set at $170 for the white, while the black one is $10 cheaper. The case does get shipped with the support column pre-installed, which can be removed during or after the build, achieving the fish tank mod as Lee and Lee likes to call it, creating a completely unobserved view of the system's hardware, just like the O11 Evo XL and the more recent O11 Vision, which I've also done a video on. It seems like this design is here to stay and we're gonna see a ton more cases come out this year with the fish tank mod. I love that they went with a toolless design for the side panels. No thumb screws are needed for any of the tempered glass panels, including the rear mesh panel. However, the top two panels will require you to twist off a few thumb screws in order to slide it off. Just like the O11 Vision, you can reposition the IO ports to any of the three sides underneath the case. However, this time you don't need to remove any screws. Just simply release the tab, slide it out, and reverse the process to install it in another location. You can also reposition the included cable clip accordingly. If you find yourself needing more IO ports, luckily Lee only does sell additional uh, modular IO kits that you can clip onto your case. Speaking of IO, Lee Lee has moved the rest of the buttons on the other side, which will give you manual control over the RGB lights that run across the top and bottom edge of the case. You can change the colors, the effects, and the brightness all on here, but you can also sync the lights with your motherboards RGB software if you want to control everything at the same time. I'm not going to sit here and complain that the grommets are not in white, in a white case, because I'm pretty sure Lin Lee has always made these in gray from what I can remember. So while white grommets do exist, and personally I think they will look a lot cleaner in a white case, it's not the end of the world. I'm just really glad they didn't go with black grommets instead, and they stuck with silver screws, so that's nice. And as a bonus, they did stick with white cables for the front panel connectors too, so good job Lee and Lee. We still have the awesome magnetic SSD tray in the back that helps cover the cables when closed. There's also two included adjustable cable bars and two removable hard drive cages near the top, which can now be moved to free up additional space. You can move it slightly towards the top or the bottom. Speaking of space, the power supply mounting bracket is protruding outside the case, allowing for more space in the rear chamber for cable management. I mean, look at how much more room you have to work with. I was able to hook up the power supply first and still have enough space to plug the cables in comfortably after. Another feature I've been seeing a lot of lately in cases recently is the interchangeable front panel. The O11 Evo RGB also has this feature, giving users the option of replacing the front glass with a mesh panel, which is sold separately by the way. You'll get one panel and two brackets, allowing you to install up to triple 140 or 120 millimeter fans or two 160 millimeter fans. While most people put their PCs on the right side of their desk, there are very rare instances where that's not possible due to the layout of their setup. For those unlucky individuals, there is still hope because the Evo RGB is completely reversible. 
when you invert a PC, you essentially flip everything upside down. The glass is now facing the opposite side, allowing you to put the PC on the left side of your desk and still be able to admire your build. Just like the previous O11 models, the EVO RGB is just as user-friendly to build in, with a nice open interior, removable brackets for the fans, and giant grommets to help with easy cable routing. You could even choose between two motherboard modes, either low or high mode, giving you the flexibility of freeing up space near the bottom or the top. This can come in clutch if you're doing a full custom loop with thick boy radiators. I actually ran into an issue where I couldn't fit my triple 140mm fans on the bottom because they were way too thick and they wouldn't align with the mounting holes in the bracket because the cables from the bottom of the motherboard were pushing against the fans. So I moved the motherboard back to the top, which gave me more clearance of the fans on the bottom. Speaking of clearance, there is plenty of room for all types of fan and radiator configurations. I mean, you can fit up to a 420mm rad up top and 360mm radiators on the side and bottom or triple 140mm fans on three sides, including the front if you decide to go with the mesh panel. This is the perfect case for enthusiasts who want to do high-end builds, especially full-on custom loops. Now when it comes to installing the graphics card, we do have the option of mounting it three different ways just like the previous EVO models. You can do it the regular way by sliding it into the top PCI slot of your motherboard or pick up any of the two additional mounting brackets which are sold separately. The upright GPU kit will let you hang your GPU off to the side which aesthetically might be appealing to some but it creates an empty void in the rest of the case especially if you don't plan on adding any fans on the bottom it just looks very empty the vertical gpu kit will allow you to mount the gpu well vertically do keep in mind that there will be a massive gpu sag on 40 series cards and unfortunately there's nothing you can do about it unless you buy an aftermarket GPU sag bracket. But if you mount the GPU horizontally, you don't have to worry about sag because the case does come with a sag bracket that you can attach to the motherboard tray. For this specific build, I went with three intake fans on the bottom, two intake on the side, and four exhaust. Three of them from the AIO on top, and one more in the back for a near perfect neutral pressure. Now the fans I'm using inside the PC are the new TL series from Neon Lee. They make one with an LCD screen and one without. The TL series are basically the offspring of the Infinity fans and the SL series, but with better cooling, low noise, and more lighting effects. The improved cooling is the result of a new 9-blade design made of liquid crystal polymer, which maintains their shape while spinning at high speeds, and also allows the blades to extend closer to the fan frame, making them perfect for radiator cooling. One thing I don't understand though is why didn't you guys cover the ugly bearing in the middle? It sticks out way too much, even while it's spinning. You guys could have just put your logo on there, or very least, like a, uh, like a blank sticker or something. This looks hideous, I'm sorry. Okay, this could have easily been avoided. However, Lin Lee did something right with the TL fans. They added these really cool rubber covers in each corner on both sides, which helps cover the screws. So you basically peel this off, screw in your fan, and then you can cover it right back up. So you get this really clean, minimal look. The TL series are also a part of the UniFan lineup, meaning these are also daisy chainable by attaching them together up to 16 fans on a single controller. You can also combine the TL LCD fans because they share the same controller, however you can't interconnect them together. You can only group the same type of fans. However, it's worth noting that the LCD fans do require more power, so you're only able to run up to 7 LCD fans at the same time, with each port being able to support only 3. So technically, you can do a 3 plus 3 plus 1 configuration and use the fourth port on the controller to plug up to 9 TL fans. So the new TL LCD fans have a very sharp 1.6 inch IPS screen with a 400 by 400 resolution. And you can do some pretty cool stuff with it in the LKNX software. Do I think it's a gimmick? Yes. Are gamers still going to drool over it? Yes. Look, I'm not hating on Lee and Lee for coming up with new stuff, okay? I, I get it. I get the point behind these fans. It's mostly a power play, okay? If they don't do it, someone else will. And I feel like Lee and Lee always wants to be ahead of the game. They want to be the first creating cool PC tech for gamers. Regardless of how gimmicky or pointless this might seem, you know, it's gathering a lot of attention. It's getting a lot of coverage and it ultimately leads to brand awareness and more revenue. As far as who these LCD fans are designed for, honestly, I just think it's for people with deep pockets 
and or content creators. This is a cool thing to feature on your TikTok or Instagram reel. I mean, it's gonna get attention because nothing like this currently exists. The triple pack goes for $150 for either the regular or the reverse blade design. And the single pack goes for 52 bucks if you buy the white. They are not cheap. Look, all I'm saying is that it's a pretty big investment when you look at the bigger picture, right? Is it somewhat functional? I guess, I mean, technically you can show off hardware information on there, but realistically, how close do you sit next to your PC and how often are you gonna lean forward to check info on a 1.6 inch screen? This is mostly for aesthetics and content creation. The fact that you can customize it with cool videos or GIFs to make your PC stand out from the crowd, it's a flex. It's really nothing more than a flex in the PC community. And that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. One thing I will say though, is I love how intuitive Lee and Lee made the L-Connect 3 software. You can actually sync all the fans together, regardless if they are LCD or not. And you can control the lights at the same time for a seamless look. But the real question is, how many of you are gonna buy the LCD fans? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'll drop a link to everything I talked about down below as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon in the next one.